Meantime, President Trump and Apple CEO Tim Cook will be uh, touring a Mac Pro factory that's uh, taking place in Texas today. I want to go over to Eamon Javers, who joins us with a preview of that. Eamon. Yeah, good morning, Andrew. Huge stakes here in Austin, Texas today as the president travels here. He's going to visit a facility where they build those MacBook Pro computers. Apple announcing that in September they were going to expand production here in the United States because they were able to get some tariff exclusions. Now, the question is, is there going to be visible tension between these two men? The expectation is that both will be at their most diplomatic, but there has been some tension between them in the past. The president, very critical of Apple during the campaign. Uh, Tim Cook, uh, hosted a fundraiser for Hillary Clinton back in 2016. Today, though, both sides are going to try to do some persuasion. The president is going to be persuading the American public that his tariffs are working. That is, American companies like Apple are bringing at least some production back into the United States. Tim Cook is going to be trying to persuade the president not to hurt Apple with a December 15th round of tariff increases, trying to find a way for Apple to get additional exclusions and protect so much of its manufacturing. Now, if you look at uh, the MacBook Pro overall, it's an expensive product, uh, but it's not a major seller in terms of overall revenue. Take a look at the revenue uh, of, comp of products made in China versus made in the United States. And what you see is that Mac products globally are pale in comparison to iPhone sales, which are a much, much bigger sales figure annually for Apple, according to their Q4 report. So what you're looking at here is MacBook Pro being a relatively small piece of Apple's overall production. But Tim Cook has to focus on protecting that big number here. And that's the number that could be impacted by that December 15th tariff increase, guys. So a lot to watch for here in Austin, Texas throughout the day today. Eamon, a couple of questions in terms of this. Uh, it's a little bit of a strange bedfellow situation that's, uh, uh, taking place there in Austin. That's right. Um, who wanted to do this? Meaning, was this instigated by Tim Cook and Apple? Or was this instigated by the White House and President Trump in terms of this obviously being, uh, in large part, what seems like a photo op. Yeah, look, that's a really good question. We don't entirely know the answer to that. Neither side will comment. But just in, in terms of the, the body language and the communication between the two entities, the White House and Apple, all of the communication on this is coming from the White House, not from Apple. All the, our direction on what's going to happen today coming from the White House, not from Apple. I right. think the president has more to gain here right. than Tim Cook does. There's a lot and of look, risk in this for Tim there's Cook. There's been a lot it's of one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Tim Cook. Right. There's been a lot of articles written over uh, the past six months about actually how Tim Cook has threaded this needle uh, with the president. He has yeah. devoted a lot more time than many other CEOs in America have talking to the president. Uh, to some extent, I imagine, trying to ingratiate Apple with the president, given uh, the possibility of tariffs on their products. Um, but what is seems so interesting to me is how he's uh, thread that needle at the same time that he's managed to placate what I imagine could be employees who have different political views than the president, uh, consumers that may have very different sure. views than the president, and how you think he's managed that. And, and, and therefore, what this meeting is about, I assume, is also part of some deal, because everything, to some degree, with the president is a deal. That's right. And I'm told that Tim Cook has managed that in large part by going through the Trump family, talking to Melania Trump at dinners uh, that are held at the White House, talking to Ivanka Trump, serving on uh, the president's jobs board uh, that's very important to the president. You remember, a lot of CEOs walked away from this president after his comments at Charlottesville. Now, here's Tim Cook showing up again and again. I asked the president what Tim Cook is doing differently, and the president told me, look, he's the only CEO who actually picks up the phone and calls me directly when he needs something. The president said Tim Cook has been very effective at making his case inside the White House why these tariffs shouldn't hurt Apple. Uh, but you're right, Tim Cook is a, a comes from a liberal Silicon Valley. He hosted a fundraiser for Hillary Clinton. These would not be the two men you would right. think of as bosom and, buddies. And the, and the question is whether, are, the question to me is state. whether a photo op like this today actually creates a problem not for the president so much as it creates a problem potentially for Apple. Sure. Well, the question is, you know, first of all, Apple's own employees uh, out in liberal Silicon Valley, right. as we've been talking about, you know, also here in Austin, Texas, and then uh, and, and their customers, right? I mean, how do Apple customers perceive Tim Cook, uh, you know, ingratiating himself with Donald Trump? There's risk there, but I think if you're Apple, you look at the risk 
of those December 15th tariffs hitting all the iPhones that are manufactured in China, and you say, we, we just have to take some action here to preserve our bottom line.